Our next speaker is Enda Morgan. He is the founder of Blush Wedding Music, and he's the loving and proud father of Rachel, who's here today. I want to welcome Rachel. Enda spoke at our Dublin meeting as part of our spring pre-referendum meetings, and the story of him and his family is similar to many across our nation. Enda Morgan. Thanks, Sherry. Um, yeah, my name is Enda. I'm a married man. Uh, we're married 30 years. We've got four grown-up children. And our eldest daughter, her name is Rachel. And Rachel is 27 years of age. So five years ago, Rachel came out to Audrey and myself. And that evening was a very, very emotional evening. Um, Rachel obviously found it very, very difficult to say it to us. She was deeply upset on the night. Um, she was crying. She was shaking uncontrollably. And holding your daughter in your arms, your daughter in your 20s, as a father, with that emotional stress, it, it's very distressing. The, it wasn't the issue that Rachel came out and said she was gay. What concerned me most of all was that my eldest brother is gay. Um, he emigrated in 1971. Taoiseach, you referred to it, to the fact that it was, it was the, the isolation and the marginalization in our country in those years was just too difficult to deal with. So Rachel knows that Audrey and myself have had a touching point with the LGBT community for a long, long time, but still found it so difficult to come out to us. She was repeating over and over the words to me that night, Dad, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I'm just saying, what are you sorry for? And a real concern was what our extended family and friends would think. And that's, that's the first point. But what was much more upsetting and frightening for me was that that's how difficult it was for Rachel. What is it like? for other boys and girls out there who have to come out to parents who would not have had those touching points or that level of understanding of the gay community. And I asked Rachel that question. I said, Rachel, do you think there are many other people out there who have not yet come out? And she said, Dad, there are thousands. There are thousands. And I think that's, that, that's very disturbing. And this referendum is a fantastic opportunity for us to take the step up the ladder, the two steps, the three steps, the four steps. This is one of the biggest steps we are making for our children, for our grandchildren. The step of normalization, destigmatize it, make them happy. Rachel explained to me that she lived in a bubble. She lived in this bubble of anxiety and self-doubt for many years because she was gay. This should not happen. We should not let our children live like this. And there are children living like this right now across this country. And we need to open it up. We need to show them that by making the right decision here that we give full unadulterated recognition to our gay children. Up to the time that Rachel came out, she was suffering from anxiety and panic attacks. And we could not figure out where this was coming from. And this was going on for over a year. And after Rachel came out, it was like a massive weight off her shoulders. She was 100% perfect. She's confident. She's happy. That's the most important thing. She's really happy. And she's flourishing. And two years ago, Rachel met the love of her life, Marion. Marion is in the room here as well. So Marion is a beautiful person. And when Rachel and Marion come to our house, love walks in the door and it's the same love 
It's the same love that I have for my wife that any heterosexual relationship has. It's the exact same love. And while I'm on the subject of same love, Jerry mentioned that um, I run a wedding music operation. Shortly after, well, I've, a few months after Rachel came out, I did a same-sex civil partnership. I performed at a same-sex civil partnership. And it was the first one I'd done, and it was two wonderful girls, Cathy and Pauline. And I found that very emotional because it was my first experience of a same-sex partnership since my daughter came out. And so I was playing the music as they walked in the door. And Cathy and Pauline walked in the door and love walked in the door. The same love walked in the door as every single heterosexual marriage that I perform at. The exact same love. And it's, you know, I, I'm so thankful that the, our government has given us the opportunity to vote on this. I think this is going to make such a big, big difference. And what, for Rachel and for Marion, they don't want to go down on their knees to each other and say, will you join me in a civil partnership? They really want to have the basic human right that their siblings have, and that we all have, to say those four magic words, go down on their knees to each other and say, will you marry me? Thank you.